How many of you have ever gotten back an assignment from a teacher and looked at the grade and thought, what? This paper deserved at least 5, 10, 15% more than this. How many of you have ever come in third place or last place and thought, what? I did just as good as the person who came second place, first place, maybe even better than them. How many of you have ever thought that your teacher's grading system just doesn't seem fair or make any sense to you? Well, let me take you guys back to roughly 1933, Auschwitz. Here at this location, a new form of identifying prisoners arose in the form of ink on skin and sewn on numbers onto uniforms. Here at this location, people were stripped of all their identity just by labeling them with a number. Where they once had names and stories, they became just codes. Where they were once people, they became just numbers. Now, let me bring you back to 2014, where this system of numbering people is still around. Think about it. Since birth, we've all been defined by numbers. Inches, feet, pounds, centimeters, and so on. It continues, grades. We constantly label everything as numbers. Mathematics is such a part of our life that sometimes we don't even realize it. When a loved one dies, it's the death of just one person. But it affects us so greatly. Whereas on the news, you'll see deaths of 40,000, 50,000 people. And the effect is not the same. Why? That number groups all those people together to the point where they're just a statistic, just a number. It groups them to the point where we can't even comprehend how much of a loss of human lives that is. So how can we make this even worse? Well, we live in a society where people constantly run around and slap numbers onto one another to label them for certain characteristics or achievements that they possess, sometimes just based on vague scales or opinions. We've been doing this since the dawn of time. And nowadays, different versions of numbering people run amok everywhere. We constantly reduce people to just numbers, like the Auschwitz example I gave. These people were just tattooed with numbers. Imagine if you weren't called your name anymore. Imagine if you were just 5781, and that was it. How would that make you feel as a person? Our names give us such pride. I don't think you'd feel really good. Well, what are the long-term effects of numbering people? Let me give you an example. I can talk on and on and on about the difference between you and me, or you and me, I can talk even more about the difference between my mom and me and my dad and me. But if you turned to me and said, Ezgi, what's the difference between one and two? I'd say, okay, well, two is one more than one, whatever that means. And, uh, well, two kind of has a curved shape, but one's just a straight line. Yeah, that's it. See, the difference list is so short. Now, to prove my point even more, I'm going to talk about the long-term effects of this. Let's set up a story. Here, on the stage, I want you guys to imagine that there's a bunch of people, all these individuals, and I'm observing them. I come up with a category like, let me think, creativity, okay? So I want to put these people in order of the most creative to the least creative. So how am I going to do this? I come up with some sort of test. On my test, I write all these questions that I think will reflect their creativity. It's just me based, it's personal. So I give these tests to them, and the people fill out the tests. 
I gather back the results, and I look at it. Okay. You. I think you're a five. You're a seven. You're a ten. You're a nine. Oh, and you're a one. So what happens when I tell these people their numbers and they disagree? What if they think, who is she to mold me into that shape? Why does this test have to count for my overall capability? How can you measure something as personal as creativity of other people based on your own personal belief? So the loud ones will probably start arguing with me and say, no, I'm a seven, no, I'm a 10, et cetera, et cetera. The quieter ones might just kind of sulk and ponder. But ponder, thinking, that's what they'll all be doing. All the while, they'll be thinking about the number I gave them. If they're a seven, they'll go, I'm a seven, why am I a seven? Um, it's probably because I did this or this or this. They'll think about it so much that some of them might fall for the self-fulfilling prophecy technique. Now this technique is when you start to live to something that someone else gave you. So if I told that person over there they're a one, they're gonna start to think, you know, maybe Ezgi's right. Maybe I am as creative as a brick. Slowly, they're going to start to dim themselves down to be that one. They're going to dim themselves down that they'll never reach their true potential. They'll never grow or try to improve because they think they're just a one. That's a really negative consequence, especially if we're doing this in an environment where we need individuals to grow and learn, like a school. So. What happens, what happens to another consequence, let's think. Well, what if the people who are arguing refuse to let me, no matter my authority in this situation, tell them who they are? They decide that they're gonna prove to me that, th that I'm underestimating them. So they decide to break out of their symbols bordered lines and be greater than they are. That sounds good, right? But think of the extremes that someone could go to to prove that. If you guys have ever been underestimated for anything, you know how much that hurts. When you know you can do better, but there's someone on the line saying no, you just stay in your number. That makes someone feel horrible that they would go to any extent to prove that person wrong. So, my point here is that people don't realize how much harm this system can cause. No matter the number I give, while I give that seven and I tell them it's a seven, they're thinking, what, I could have been a nine. There was two steps that I couldn't climb to be a nine. What's missing? The whole time they're thinking that, the nines are thinking, one point and I could have been a 10. That'll haunt them forever. They'll think about everything that's wrong with them. They'll try to find that missing piece, that missing one, and they might end up scattering the whole puzzle to find it. All the while, the ones are just staring hopelessly at everyone because why should they bother to improve since they're just ones? This system of numbering can be so in unfair and unjust. I want you guys to think about this. We're a planet of seven billion people. How can you come up with a scale that puts them all in the same category and you come up with it? You can't read minds. You haven't walked in other people's shoes to make this judgment. And let's say you could. What's the end to your scale? Let's say I meet someone amazing and I'm like, whoa, you're so creative. Everything they say is just so inspiring. And I'm like, okay, you're definitely a 10 in my mind. Then the next day I'm walking on the street and I meet someone else who's maybe even more outstanding. Does my scale go to 11? Does everybody shift down? Asking what the highest number on the scale is, is like asking who's the most creative person on the planet. I dare one of you to take up the challenge to come up with a marking system that's accurate, fair, everyone agrees upon it. It's impossible, right? So let's go back to my example. That seven is still sitting there glaring at the nines. It decides, no. I'm better than that nine, and I'm gonna prove my superiority once and for all. So I'm gonna ask a question that a lot of you are familiar with. 
Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. See, it's a little nursery rhyme we learn in school. The grand number labeling factory itself. Thank you.